the clinical use of radio surgery. Before viewing this video, you need to do the video on the background and the concept of radio surgery, which is part one. Let's talk about doing simple crown lengthening where we are not going to go apical to the clinical attachment. So we go in there and on the left, you can see where the radio surgery has been used. And here is a slide that we showed you earlier with a char layer created by the soft tissue laser. Note please that there is a minimal amount of bleeding and using the 90% cutting mode and 10% coagulation, we can create a, a laser-like wound. So here's the pre-op view and here it is about two or three weeks later. Typically you get this type of healing at about a week to 10 days but in my practice, we saw all post-ops uh, three weeks later so that we had um, tissue maturity and the patient could practice good home care. We see the gingival asymmetry here, and we see where we have used the radio surgery unit to make our cut, and then we're taking a curette and removing that excessive tissue, and then we're using, again, the pointed tip just to remove any slight areas of granulation tissue. And this is the way the area heals up, actually in about a week to 10 days. But typically we saw these patients two to three weeks later. This is one of the most gratifying cases that I had the opportunity to treat. This lady about 50 years ago had trauma to that central incisor and this tissue proliferated down. So this patient came from the Church Health Center, it was a charity patient, and so we went in and simply removed that, and we can see the way it looked about three weeks later. Never have I seen a patient more gratified than this particular lady. We had done a free gingival graft on this tooth, and you can see the uh, keloid-looking tissue there. So simply going in there and planing that down, we can see the aesthetic result that we were able to gain using the radiosurgery unit. Yes, you could use a blade on that or you could use a rough diamond and all, but you would get significantly more bleeding. It would be slower healing and in all probability much more painful than using the radiosurgery unit. In this case, we've closed a midline diastema markedly, and you can see the redundant tissue there. We've gone in and used the radio surgery unit, and we actually went in and actually did a phrenectomy apical to that. So here we see uh, a mistake that was made here. Notice the gingival asymmetry right here. So it'd be a very simple uh, procedure to go back in there and modify that for as we've said in other videos, the tissue level needs to be higher on the distofacial than on the mesiofacial, and we have a re reverse of that. So a touch-up surgery would certainly be done on this, which would take virtually no time. Here are some reusable tips, and basically I only used about four, five, or six tips for all the radio surgery that I did. The real workhorse is the 108. You can see the round tip on the 127, which is used for an ovate ponic, and then you can see on the 124, we use that for placing the bevel. Here is the 108, which is the versatile tip, and you can see where we're making a cut and a mistake was made on this. We are just cutting through that tissue and by overheating the tissue, you can see on the tissue is going to be removed that this is sort of tannish and grayish, and actually you should not see any color change in the tissue. In this case, it's going to make absolutely no difference because that tissue is going to be, be removed. And then you can take the same tip and place it in the interproximal area and kind of spin it around and get rid of any granulation tissue in the interdental area. 
When doing flap surgery, this is a beautiful way of removing the granulation tissue uh, in pocket elimination surgery and gaining better access for root planing. This is the triangular tip, the 124, which you can see that I placed the bevel and you will notice that there is no charlator, there is no bleeding, and this is going to heal very, very nicely. Now, the three-week post-op on this we see on the bottom. This is the pre-op, same patient on the maxillary arch, post-radio surgery, and the pre-op, I mean the post-op on both the maxillary and the mandibular arch. This was a full mouth gingivectomy on a patient from the Church Health Center here in Memphis where the patients pay $25 an hour and we did a complete gingivectomy, maxillary and mandibular arch with the radio surgery in that hour period of time. We mentioned the ovate pinic and you have two round uh, electrodes, <clears throat> one to be used in a lateral area which is smaller and this one which is used, the 127 creating the ovate pontic space. And this is much easier than doing it with a burr. It is very, very, the margins are very regular. It takes virtually no time. And you can see the result that we're gonna get on that. Nicotine stomatitis. You can use a ball electrode on this and get a very nice uh, color change on that. Gingiplasty and a calcium channel blocker. We can see this proliferated tissue, and we had the Dental Surge 90 unit in all of our uh, recall maintenance op operatories where the hygienists worked. And when they saw something like this, before calling us in, the patient, the hygienist would anesthetize this area, and we would come in and simply remove this tissue in about a minute period of time. And actually, I made no charge for that. It was just a service to the patient. So this is the tissue that is going to be removed. Post-surgery gingiplasty. We can see on this, uh, on the mesial of this mandibular first molar, the tissue that is mounted up there. And before I had radio surgery a unit, we would place the patient on a rubber tip stimulator and over a period of time by pressure atrophy, we would contour that tissue. Now that's no longer necessary and actually using a, a powerful uh, uh, topical anesthetic and being careful not to touch the teeth, you can actually do this under topical. But you must be careful and not touch the tooth because they will get a little electrical shock on that. And one aside on this, and this is a good place to discuss it, you wanna be very careful in using this unit around a porcelain restoration like porcelain veneers in the maxillary anterior for if you touch the porcelain, porcelain, you'll get a spark and a black area will appear. So place a plastic instrument in the sulcus on these teeth if you're going to use radio surgery on a porcelain crown or veneer in the anterior area. We can see a regenerative procedure was done and we can see the excessive flap. Again, this can be done with topical and you will notice there's virtually no bleeding no, not necessary to place a periodontal dressing and certainly not necessary to use pressure atrophy to contour this area using a rubber tip stimulator. We've done a laterally positioned flap, which is on a, another video to uh, get rid of the frenum, but you'll notice that we have uneven gingival form. So using the radio surgery, we went in there and contoured that tissue. Nicotine stomatitis, we've already discussed. And here we see melanin pigmentation and using a ball electrode because this is pigmentation is very superficial. And you can go in there and just dot this area and remove it. And if you don't get it the first time, you can certainly come back and do it again. Again, using a ball electrode. So this you can see where the area has been touched and then you can see where we have completely removed the pigmented tissue and we have nice contours on that. This is an interesting case. 
we did a bone graft in this extraction socket and where we have the amalgam tattoo, we're gonna go in and we can see the defect that bone is gonna be placed in. And then we're gonna tunnel laterally on the left side and place this connective tissue graft in, in the tunnel as you see on the bottom. The area is sutured and you can see the blackened tissue there. This is allowed to heal for a couple of months and then we went in and you can see the residual amalgam tattoo and after we've removed the epithelial layer you can see the exposed connective tissue again no bleeding uh, and this area we can see post-operatively and on the bottom we can see how this area heals up and a close-up view on that showing where we have removed that blackened tissue and allowed the connective tissue to mature. Another indication for using the radiosurgery unit is in the adolescent patient that has a tissue flap over the second molar as it erupts. And this is a case treated by Dr. Bradley Nurenblatt, an orthodontist in Charleston, South Carolina. And you will notice that he has removed this tissue and there's no bleeding. And this is certainly a lot easier to do than trying to use a blade to do this. Another case of Dr. Nierenblatt is this situation where you have 10 millimeters to 12 millimeters of gingiva. And by going in and using the radio surgery, he can now go in and place bands on these teeth. But you want to have a minimum of three millimeters of gingiva remaining, and these teeth can now easily be realigned orthodontically. Hopefully you can see the many uses of the radiosurgery unit and now understand the difference between it and electrosurgery and to see how it compares very favorably with the soft tissue laser.